Tommy, it was a very successful afternoon. You know, you were just wonderful. It was a pleasure to work with such a lovely group. Oh, and now let me see. I think I owe you $25, don't I? Yes. Let's see, here's 10. 10. Another 10. And, oh, dear. You don't know some magic word, do you, that'll make $5 appear? You mean like abracadabra? <laughs> <laughs> it's magic! <laughs> Daddy, would you give me $5, please? For what? Uh, for the Swami. Swami? Uh, yes, uh, Swami, this is my husband, Danny Williams. Oh, how do you do? Peace be with you. Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye. Yes, I must leave. You don't want to leave before you get your five dollars. Oh, uh, never mind. Consider it a discount for a prompt payment. <laughs> oh. Don't get excited. Never cut your price unless you have to. Here. Here. Oh, yes. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Listen, Thank you, sir. Have I seen you somewhere? Uh, no, no. I've never been there, sir. You've never been there? I'm not sure. I've never been there either. Goodbye. Peace be with you. <laughs> I know that guy. Where have I seen him before? With Rags Raglan, dear old Rags. Remember in Burlesque, he did a mind reading act with Rags. That's who it is, Doodle's Faye. Doodle's Faye. I had the name on the tip of my tongue and I couldn't you say You mean he's not a Hindu? <laughs> Hindu schmindu. That guy was one of the top comics in Burlesque. That's right. A comic in Burlesque? Right. Oh, well, anyway, I don't care. He's a wonderful Swami, and we had a delightful afternoon. Say, how about that? A guy with talent like Doodle's face stooping to a Swami act, huh? Stooping? Well, it seems to me that's a better way to make a living than a comic in burlesque. What are you talking about? Well, you're just like everybody else. Everybody has a wrong conception of burlesque. I mean, burlesque was wonderful in the old days. It was funny. It was comedy. It had nothing to do with being blue or off color. The greatest comedy bits you see in television today were, were, were born in burlesque. How about Clark and McCullough, Wheeler and Wolfie, Abbott and Costello, all from burlesque. Fanny Bryce, even uh, 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 the greatest actors. And Phil Silver's on Broadway today. He started in burlesque. As a matter of fact, didn't, didn't Doodles Faye work with Phil Silver? Of course he did. I used to love to watch Doodles work, and I knew all his bits by heart. <laughs> he was oh, great. Charlie, was I didn't know you were ever in burlesque. Oh, that's how I started in show business. I was a candy butcher. Yeah, you remember yeah. those crossover scenes you used to do with Phil? Yeah. They were scenes. Fun. What are they? Boy, you've lived such a sheltered life, my sweet wife. Sit down. We'll show you what crossovers are. Go what ahead. Are you, you, you be the top banana. Go on. I'm the second banana. Huh? Go on. Go on. Uh -huh. Go on. Uh, ready? How did you, ladies and gentlemen? A funny thing happened to me on the way to the theater. A panhandler came up to me and he said, Pardon me, buddy, can you help me out? I haven't tasted food for three days. I said, that, Don't worry about it. It tastes the same. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you going with that? I'm a lawyer. I gotta take my case to court. I gotta take. <laughs> I, 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 before I was rudely interrupted, ladies and gentlemen, I was trying to say a panhandler came up to me and he says, "Pardon me, buddy, can you help me out? I haven't had a bite in three days." So I bit him. <laughs> you can't bite. I would. Hey, wait, wait a minute. Where are you going now? I gotta take my case to a higher court. Higher court. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I was trying to say before I was terribly rudely interrupted. This bump come up to me, and he, and, and he looks at me, and I look at him, and I says, why are you so miserable? He says, I'm not miserable. He says, I'm going crazy. It's my mother-in-law. I says, what is it? He says, well, he says, I sent her to Miami Beach, and all she did was talk, talk, talk until her tongue got sunburned. Her tongue got sunburned. <laughs> I, uh, hey, lawyer, what happened? Lost my suit. I lost my suit. <laughs> Watch this, honey. This was a beaut.
that the sort of stuff they used to do in burlesque? That's it, yeah, honey. That's it. And isn't it a shame? Isn't it a shame that a guy like Doodles, who used to do all that kind of stuff, has to make a living being a, a phony swami? Well, what are you gonna do? That stuff is all passe now, Charlie. It's an entirely new generation. They don't go for burlesque. Oh, how do you know they don't go for burlesque when they've never even seen it? He, you know, she just said something. Yeah. Yeah, then, I mean, if, if they've never seen it, how, how are we going to And good know? comedy is ageless. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? I'm thinking exactly what you're thinking. It'll save the middle of our new show. Honey, we'll be a little late for dinner. Come on, Charlie, get your hat. Okay. Let's get out of here. Right up. Whoever it is, I'll pay you Tuesday. Open up, Doodles. It's me, Danny Ware. Danny... Yeah, uh, just a minute. Uh, just a minute. Coming. Uh, here I am. Well... Danny, well, nice see you. Hey, Charlie, yeah, come in. How are things at the club? Good. Yeah, oh, sit down, wonderful. huh? Sit down. I'm sorry, the place is a mess. I've been redecorating. Here, oh. have a seat. <laughs> Make yourself at home. Thank you. You know how those decorators are. They mess up the place, then you don't see them for three weeks. <laughs> I'm going to call that Pierre. Ooh, what I'm going to call that Pierre. <laughs> <laughs> well, as they say, fellas, what are you doing on the wrong side of the tracks? Well, frankly, Doodles, that's what we came to ask you. I mean... Why, a fellow with your kind of talent would be doing a phony swami act. You recognize me, huh? Well, Charlie did. Well, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, I give my customers their money's worth. I'm sure you do. Look, uh, Doodles, you, you remember that, that stuff, the bits he used to do with Harry Clicks? You know, the one way you used to heckle him from the audience. Yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> Gee, you're going back a long way. You still remember that stuff? Sure, I remember, but that was a long time ago. <laughs> Doodles, how, how'd you like to do some of those bits with me at the Copa? You mean work with you at the Copa? I think it'd be great. Mm, well, I don't know. Burlesque bits in a plush nightclub. Why not? No, no, I don't, I don't... What do you mean, you don't? What, what were you talking about? I, I don't think so, you see. And besides, I, 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 I'm, uh, I'm building up a new, a new uh, reputation, you know. A new business, and I gotta keep myself available. I got some tentative appointments and bookings. No. Tentative appointments? Well, you know, I you gotta... You sound like you're scared. Scared? Who's scared? And what's being scared got to do with it? Uh, Just because a guy's... A, a guy don't want to jump into something, that doesn't mean he's scared. Well, what does it mean? Well, it means it's been a long time, after all. Guy in our business, you know, he never likes to flop, and and besides... Gee, Miss fellas, why can't you leave me alone? Because we want to help you get back where you belong. We want to help you, that's why. Some help. You're helping me. Like a cat helps a mouse. Do you think it was easy for me to become a phony? you think it was easy for me to forget what applause sounds like? Now... After all these years, you want me to go back into it? No. No thanks, buddy. No. I can't do it. Wait a minute, Doodles. We're your friends. We're trying to help you. We don't want you to slip out of show all business. Right, forget it. Forget it. Why? Let's, let's just drop the whole thing. I, I was wrong, anyway. I am huh? not really that hot about the idea anymore. Well, we'd probably get booed off the floor. Well, wait a minute. What do you mean, booed off the floor? Well, that's pretty stale material, let's face it. No, wait a minute. The material isn't as bad as you make it out to no be. No offense, Doodles. No offense. It's just that... Well, after all, we have a very sophisticated audience at the Copa. They don't go for corn, you know. Listen, corn will never die. I don't care how sophisticated your customers are. People still want to laugh. Why, I, I bet we could kill them if we did a bit like, uh, like, well, the Barrett's of Flugel Street or my brother's hat. I, slowly I turn. Why, I bet we'd leave them for dead. What do you say we do that? Just leave them for dead next Thursday night. Get there at 7.30. We'll talk the bit over. What do you say? Thursday night. No. No, no. I'm sorry. I can't make it. I... I got a full schedule. All right, Doodles. I won't press.
press it any further. I was only ribbing about the stuff being stale. I was raised on it. I love it. I always have and I always will. And I, I thought you felt the same way, but I guess I was wrong. No harm in trying, anyway. No, no harm. <laughs> Thanks for dropping in. See you anyway. Goodbye, then. Goodbye. Goodbye, Charlie. Thank you. Take care of yourself, kid. No harm done. Not at all. <laughs> I just checked with the doorman and with the stage manager, and no one's seen him at all. I'd have bet anything he'd show up. The way I steamed him up, I told him burlesque was passe, the jokes were corny, stale, old hat. I did everything. I, I was sure he'd show up just to make me eat my words. Well, I guess his fear is greater than his professional pride. Yeah, yeah, I know he was scared, but if I could only explain it to him, he had nothing to be afraid of. We were going to be right together. If he'd flopped, I was going to flop with him. I was going to take the same lumps. Yes, darling, but when the lumps went down, what then? You could go back to your old routines and no harm done, but what about Doodle? He's reconciled himself to the fact that he's through. And then if he lets his hopes get raised again and they're dashed again, well... Oh, Danny, do you blame him for being frightened? No. No, I guess not. No, Danny. Don't feel badly. Go out there and kill him. much, ladies and gentlemen. You're in a very gay and festive mood, and I, I certainly hope it's catching because I, I can use some help from you tonight. I don't want to sound maudlin or anything, but every now and again in an actor's life, uh, something happens that sort of crawls into his professional life, and before it gets to me altogether, I'd like to sing myself right out of the mood. Wally, smile, huh? Smile. <laughs> Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. When there are clouds in the sky. You get by. You can smile <laughs> through your tears. Young man, you're interrupting the performance. Now cut it out or I'll have the manager take you out. I only go out with girls. <laughs> now, now stop interrupting the performance. I just want to ask one question. What's that? Is that your nose or are you eating a sweet potato? <laughs> Very funny. Now you cut that out. I just want to ask one thing. What's that? What's going on behind the orchestra? There's nothing going on behind the orchestra. Well, there's nothing going on in front of it. Oh. <laughs> well, suppose we have something go on in front of it, young fella. How'd you like to come up here since you're so brave? Come on up on the stage. Me? Yeah, you. <laughs> Thought he'd never ask. You don't know how glad I am to see this fella. His face isn't familiar to you. His name is Doodles Fay. He was a great, great comedian in an era of show business that is no more burlesque. And I wonder would you folks like to see us do one of his famous sketches? Would you like to? <laughs> 
All right, thank you. All right, Doodles, I'll tell you what. Let's do the one where you're the successful businessman and I'm the tramp in the park, okay? Wally, <coughs> give me a hat. Get a couple of chairs. Make a fire man. Give me a hat, Wally. Come here. Don't die. Don't blow it. Don't steal it. Huh? You're a bum. I'm the, I'm, I'm the tramp in the park. <laughs> I'm the su successful businessman. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Got to be successful. <laughs> <laughs> Main Street. Main Street is this way. Main Street. No, it's this. I must be lost. I better ask somebody. Oh, a tramp. I beg your pardon, buddy. Can you tell me how to get to Main Street? Did you say buddy? No, I said Main Street. That's the nicest thing anyone's ever said to me for 15 years. What, Main Street? <laughs> no, buddy. Buddy, makes me feel like, like I'm sort of useful again. You know, I wasn't always a tramp and a vagrant. I was a very successful man in a fine community. My father gave me the advantage of a wonderful education. 18 years of high school. <laughs> then I met Stella, and we were married. Soon heaven sent us a little bundle of pink and white. We were so happy, Stella, the baby, and I, until he came into our lives. He was an artist, broken down and healthy and in spirit, standing at my door, and I said, come in, friend. Make my home your home. And he did. <laughs> One day I came home from work and there was that usual note pinned to the pillow. Darling, forgive me. I've taken the baby. We've run away with him. It crushed me. For years I searched. I searched the world over for that man to get my vendetta through the gal from Mexico around South America, Cape Horn into the Sahara Desert, into Spain, and then finally Paris, France, where he had left her to die. His trail brought me back to America. I traveled from coast to coast, and then one day I was at Niagara Falls, and while viewing one of the seven wonders of the earth, I saw him standing there, the man who had ruined my life, standing on the brink of Niagara Falls. I turned my back for a moment, and suddenly the lust to kill arose within me, and slowly I turned <laughs> and step by step, Closer and closer, till I was closer to the land of you. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Excuse me, I didn't mean to do that. Oh, that, that's all right. Then. I'm terribly sorry. No, that's all right. I didn't. I, it can happen to anyone. I just <laughs> almost lost my head. I almost lost mine, too. <laughs> but you can understand my feelings. Oh, yeah. I, I searched for this man a long time. I know. I know the I vendetta know. was mine. I know how you felt. I had to get even. I know. And I searched the world over. Everywhere. And to think <laughs> that after searching and searching, to accidentally see him standing there. At Niagara Falls. At Niagara Falls! <laughs> Naturally, the lust the killer rose within me. <laughs> and slow. Oh, oh, no! Step. 
I beg your pardon. <laughs> I'm terribly yeah. sorry. <laughs> I'm terribly sorry. Meanwhile, I've been all over the world. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. You can appreciate my feelings. Yeah, you can appreciate my feelings. <laughs> I mean, what would you have done if you had been in my place? Same thing. I don't play. You would have done the same thing, wouldn't you? If I had a guy like that with the note and everything. I mean, and... supposing you were searching and searching sure. for this man. Sure. Searching all over. And then you saw him That's standing... Like... <laughs> I almost said Niagara Falls. No! 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 I came here like an honest pedestrian, and I walked over to this tramp, and all I said to him was... Pardon me, buddy, can, can you tell me how to get to Main Street? Pardon me, buddy, can you tell me how to... Oh! <laughs> My turn. <laughs> stand over here. <laughs> Would you like to hear a long story and cut you on? No. <laughs> You're gonna hear it anyway, stand here. <laughs> oh. I wasn't always a dirty bum. I wasn't a tramp like I am now. My father taught me all he knew. Took him almost a week. <laughs> you were a little slow, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You're starting, huh? <laughs> Stand this way, okay. <laughs> You're gonna get it. <laughs> then I met her. She had eyes of blue. Blue. One blue east, one blue west. <laughs> her eyes were so crossed, when she cried, the tears used to roll down her back. <laughs> I know, a bacterium. Yeah. <laughs> Turn this way so I can kick you a little, all right. All right. <laughs> then he came into our life. He said he was a motion picture actor, a product of the silent days. He wouldn't talk, huh? Wouldn't say a word. <laughs> I said, come in, stranger. Make my home your home. And he did. I better get to the part where you fall down. <laughs> I started to search for him. I went to Scranton, I went to Philadelphia, I went to Scranton, then to Pittsburgh. Then asthma came. Asthma? Yeah, as my leg raised, slowly I turned. <laughs> then I get it. Inch by step, yard by yard. Do you know what happened to that fella in Niagara Falls? <laughs> Salami. <laughs> you mean swami. <laughs> Hello, kids. Hi, dear. Hi. How about reading our palms? No, I'm sorry. I've retired from the palm reading industry. Oh, since when? Since Charlie offered him 12 weeks booking at the Cobra. Oh, Doodles, that's wonderful. Yep, it's all set. <laughs> well, it's practically all set. You, what do you mean, practically? <laughs> well, we haven't spoken about the money yet. He Money? Slowly, I can't! <laughs> <laughs>